Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, welcome to our RGB system design playlist. So, in this playlist, we will learn about all the basic concepts and uh, basic to advanced concepts of system design in the in a structured manner, in a section by section manner. So, today we are going to discuss about this topic. This is our second video on the third section. I have already covered the first two sections. You can check out that in my play in the RGB system design playlist. And today's topic is REST versus GraphQL versus gRPC. So we've already discussed about HTTP, WebSockets and gRPC in our previous video. And we've already done a practical implementation of gRPC and we saw how to make our API server 10x faster using gRPC with a practical example. Please check that out also. Okay. So today's video topic is about REST versus GraphQL versus gRPC. And we're going to explore about how the Graph Query language works actually. All right. REST versus GraphQL versus gRPC. So just think of them as you know different languages or communication styles between client and on the backend server, right? So some of our you know chatty, flexible, and some are uh, some are the fast and up to the point, and others just follow you know traditional format. So choosing the right one is super important for you, and based on different criteria you need to choose which one to pick up as the you know protocol for data exchange between client and server. So let's start with the first one first, that is the REST. It's very simple, easy peasy, right? So REST is the most common and the oldest method as we know. So it works over HTTP and HTTP is the same protocol that you know your browser uses basically, right? So let's say you have endpoints like uh, get products, get users slash products slash users slash orders. Uh, and we call them using methods like put, get, delete, and all those things. So these are very, you know, uh, usual stuffs. I'm not going to discuss those in details. As an example, uh, let's say you're building an e-commerce app, right? And to get all the products, you might hit a URL like, you know, get slash products. So it will return all the product data. But think of one scenario. What if you only want the product names and prices? You can obviously argue that you can apply projections, right? You can apply projection in your API agile, uh, uh, get that. So that's where you know you need to build custom filters in order to support like get the filters from the UI, prepare queries accordingly, then query the database and get the response and uh, send it back. So this is what we call it as overfetching. So, but anyways, REST has also its pros and cons. What are the pros? It's very easy to use, right? Easy to learn and use. And it works with any browser and tool, definitely oldest method of uh, communication, right? So, and it's simple to debug with tools like Postman. Right. Postman is meant to test uh, your REST API endpoints. Some of the cons of this REST endpoint are, you know, it can send too much or too little data, leading to underfetching or overfetching. So, creating multiple versions of the API is kind of messy. You have to manually, you know, maintain versioning in your API stack. It is not the best when clients need different data formats, but other two types cover these points uh, brilliantly. So, we are going to discuss about that. So that was about REST. It is, I mean, not much as such, right? So the next is about the GraphQL. Now, why do we need GraphQL? So what is GraphQL for? So GraphQL is a, you know, it's like you can think of like a buffet. When you go to a party that you get the buffet. Instead of taking a fixed plate uh, like REST, so we have a buffet like GraphQL and we tell the server what exactly we want and it gives us the exact data and nothing else. The GraphQL works that way. It was created by Facebook, right? Because they had a complex UI and they wanted flexibility in how they can fetch data efficiently in the UI. So to understand, let's think of one example again. Okay, similar to our e-commerce application example. In the e-commerce e application with GraphQL, you can say, hey, give me the product name and the price, but skip the, but skip the description and stock status, let's say. And the server does exactly that. Now if you see here, the example here, so we define the schema like this, we will have to have a product schema and type of query, like uh, if we put a query on uh, this product schema, there we can pass the fields that we want, right, that is I want name and price, even if it is the ID, we, we are not mentioning in the client side query, and it will accordingly send us the data, like this. So if I just show you here, some of the examples, right. You see, you describe the data like this, like your, what is the project, find your data like this using this schema. 
you ask like this what you want exactly this is where you pass the filtering and this is where you pass the projection and then you get the response like this all right uh, if you see a animated example this is what you will be able to see right see you just ask for the response ask for the fields it will give you it's not not only about that it has a lot of pros and cons also it is what are the pros of graphql the pros of graphql is basically you get what you ask for simple you ask for name it will give you name all right and that too in an efficient manner so it's pretty great for your mobile or front-end application where the requirements changes frequently right the api versioning change and uh, where the maintaining api different versions become clutter cluttery right in rest and uh, the rest format but here you just have single uh, type of structure definition you define what you want in the query you'll get that without worrying about the versioning because versioning also quite easy here if you explore uh, below you'll note that you know versioning is quite easy here, right you add new fields you duplicate old fields using the deprecated tag so don't worry we're going to create a hands-on example video on graph query language it will also compare its performance with rest and other uh, grpc also we'll see what when to use what so that's a practical video that i'll be creating with a detailed example just like i have created for grpc but this in today's video i will mostly covering the theoretical aspect along with some examples so that we can understand the basics of both the three methods of communication okay. uh, graphql one of the pros is we have only one endpoint to rule everything we have just let's say slash graphql then send the things in the query parameter accordingly will get no need to maintain multiple api endpoints and all those stuffs what are the cons of graphql one of the cons is it becomes slower if we don't optimize our query so we have to be careful when we are writing our queries here next is caching is harder in this case because we have only one single endpoint so you know predicting what type of inputs might come for a given endpoint and caching which caching is easier in rest actually but here it it is a little bit harder right and it can be tricky to manage uh, on the back end with nested queries if you have deep nested queries multiple relationship between multiple entities are there it becomes a little bit complex there all right okay that was about grpc next we have is the sorry that was about graphql next we have is the grpc so grpc is like you know calling a function directly on another computer it's like remote procedural call remotely available procedure or function you call it rpc grpc it was developed by google so it is meant for speed we have already done a comparison video between grpc and http and we saw nx faster response in grpc as compared to rest apis so grpc comes with a huge you know improvement in terms of the latency reduction when communicating between multiple microservices so this is especially makes the inter microservices communication faster so it does not you know use text like uh, rest or graphql it uses protobuf as you saw right here we are using only directly json or text serialization format to query the data but in grpc we use protobuf okay i'll just give you a glimpse of the things here I'm not going to get into a detail. You can check out my detailed video on GRPC. I'll put that link in the description box. You can check out that video. There I've created a GRPC server and I've communicated between two microservices using GRPC and I've compared the performance with REST also. So GRPC uses protobuf. It's a super efficient binary format. And instead of JSON, it sends tiny packets that computers actually understand first because it's serialized in binary format, right? One example I can give you is, for example, your pricing engine needs to talk to the inventory service or pricing service needs to talk to the inventory service to give the live stock data, let's say, right? So don't want delays here, right? Because this is crucial to update the stock at the instant. So with gRPC, the response come in a lightning fast manner. So in short, we define a profile like this in server side. We, let's say, register products like this and then, you know, uh, expose the procedures or functions simply it is just functions with parameters and uh, this functions will be called by the client if you can see client dot get products right this function is defined in server side and the client is actually calling that function that's why it is called remote procedural call just like you're calling a function from your browser or from your client or from your microservice which which is present i mean the function which is present in another microservices right some of the pros are it's obviously very fast and efficient it supports streaming that's a great thing faster streaming is possible with this uh, 
so great it is great for internal service and microservices communication as i told and you can using the faster streaming capability you can send and receive data in real time so that's a very great deal for uh, application where you know real time data streaming is crucial right for example a stock market or app or trading app right those are the places where grpc comes in handy right some of the cons is it's not easy to debug in the browser because browser support is yet to be matured enough to be used grpc so it doesn't work well for public web apis and it needs schema files and code generation to you know make communication possible between two microservices all right you need to define schema schema dot proto files like this you have to compile it in order to the yeah, according to the programming language in which a particular microservice is built so that the programming language can utilize that grpc clients and other some microservices built in java let's say you have to compile it using the java compiler for grpc then two microservices can talk to each other that's a little bit complex but worth it all right now the final verdict is when to use what so if you think simply so if you have simple apis for public use go for rest if you front ends that want you know custom data very often you go for graphql as i told i'm going to create a detailed hands on video on graphql don't worry so if you want fast back end service to service communication or inter micro service communication hands on you go for grpc okay no other option you need to think about if you need real time streaming uh, data go for grpc again if your mobile apps with changing data needs where you don't want to get into the uh, headache of managing multiple api versioning man, man, multiple uh, varieties of apis or versions of api go for graphql so so in big companies like netflix or uber they actually use a mix of graphql for the front end grpc inside the back end or microservice inter micro uh, micro inter microservice communication and rest for third party integration so this is the whole stack it's not it's not you know one technique wins over all you have to use all the all all of the available tool based on your use cases okay so that's the smart way to use so what is my final thoughts so in my opinion graphql is uh, perfect for teams building modern web and uh, mobile apps while grpc is your definitely your best friend when you are focusing on high performance back end services or microservice environment so rest is still great when you want quick setup and browser friendly uh, debugging and setups in your application the key is to not to be dogmatic and uh, pick what's best for your system based on your scenario and technically practically you think then choose the uh, communication method for your uh, services okay so that was about today's video if you found this video helpful please drop a comment and drop a like let's try get for 50 likes for this video if you have any doubts let's discuss over the comments i'll answer your questions there i'm targeting to reach 3000 600 subscribers by the end of this month so keep supporting i'll request you to check my rgb system design playlist you can just go to youtube and search rgb system design playlist and you'll land on my playlist here i am covering all the system design concepts all i have nine section planned to cover and i am covering all the concepts in a detailed manner in a structured manner you'll understand everything that is needed for your system design preparation or if you are a system design architect or system architect this will help you definitely so yeah please feel free to, feel free to check this playlist playlist and let me know in the comments what improvements or you, you need or what feedback you want to give on my channel as well as in this playlist okay so yeah thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one thank you